when you have a universe of films, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe that goes back well over a decade, one of the ways the filmmakers of those franchises create continuity for fans is in the soundscapes they create, specifically within the iconic sounds from those films, like the whine of Tony Stark's arc reactor starting up or the thud of the impact of Thor's hammer. The sound designers at Skywalker Sound not only record and create these sounds, they also store them in a massive database so that their future compatriots and colleagues may find them and use those same sounds. Sound designer Samson Nesland plays us a few key sounds from their library of over 700,000 unique recordings, including a few he recently made for Thor Love and Thunder. So, Samson, in putting together the soundscape for a Marvel film, there must be not just hundreds, but tens of thousands of sounds. Yeah. How do you guys organize a library like that? Um, well, we have a, an amazing library at Skywalker and, and also uh, for Marvel specifically, but everything's, every sound is categorized. We have categories and subcategories, and then we have all kinds of metadata that we add to that. To um, make it searchable and findable? Exactly, yeah. yeah. <sighs> is there just somebody who's making sure that that list is, again, searchable and findable? And Yeah, it is the responsibility of the people because it's a pretty standard category system for this building anyway. Yeah. So they have the responsibility to, when they submit their sounds, to um, maintain that structure. But um, there is someone here, um, Tim Nielsen, who's this uh, amazing designer, and he also owns the library here, and or not owns it, but he he manages it. Right, right. And he um, he is great about organizing, make sure everything's correct, and um, things are coming in the right way. So I wonder, maybe there's sometimes you, there are designers whose brains think like yours, so finding their sounds might be easier. Yeah, no, no, that's totally true. They, <laughs> you know, I mean, you go to anybody's room or, and you can see their setup. I mean, I have a certain setup. Yeah. Uh, when I search for sounds, keywords, but you could be using, someone could be using totally different keywords and a certain keyword will bring up a whole bunch of sounds that you didn't realize that maybe that you were looking for, but you did, you just had, didn't have the right word or, because there are, I mean, the categories are great because they break things up into all these, you know, groups. But yeah. you still, there's still all these really specific things. And I mean, you know, if you type wood door in the Skywalker library, you're going to get like 15,000 <laughs> files of, and right. you, I mean, you, know, you can't listen to them if I yeah. spent the whole day just listening to doors. So, um, yeah, there's a certain, certain little words that, you know, m like little memorable words that people have just used um, that pull up a certain search term. I mean, I, that happened the other day with my friend. I, he typed in this word and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I think I kind of need that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I, can we see this database? I'd like, I'm now getting geeking out about the database yeah, itself. Of That's awesome. Totally. All right, so this is, this is part of the Marvel Sound Library? This here. is, yeah, we're in the Marvel database right now. How many sounds roughly might be in such a... Well, this, this, <laughs> yeah, well, right now it says we have 1,659 records, but that's not entirely accurate. Um, what happens is that hundreds of sounds are made for each movie. Right. And so the kind of cherry, uh, more iconic ones are picked. So ones that people shouldn't probably be using in other movies because they're so um, specific to the Marvel database. Um, kind of like a Star Wars library. You wouldn't want to have the R2-D2 sounds in the, the general library where people could just search right, through there. Right. And, uh, I but, see. So you work in the database to put sounds that are going to be useful for future projects instead of sounds that are going to be confusing for future projects. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, yeah. I mean, they're kind of scattered over a lot of different places, but the, the, yeah, this Marvel database does have the ones that are, you know, the hammer. Um, Tony's lighting up. Yep, exactly. Amazing. Yeah, yeah we can play. Can some we play of those. some? Sure. Wanda mid throws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. The Wanda mid throw. Uh, let's see. Oh, hammer. Oh. Big chunky hammer hits. Hey, so when they come out with toys, do the toy companies call you guys to get these sounds? Yeah, it's pretty funny that they call us kind of too early because <laughs> we're still working on them a lot of the time. So uh, I'll send you what I have, but I don't, I don't know if this might change because um, they, they, they're developing the toys really early on in the process. That We always joke about that. 
the, when the toy comes out, that's when we're going to know what it actually looks like. It's right. Because, you know, we're still working to, you know, it's, it's just still a work in progress when we're developing these sounds. Let's play some more. Yeah. Um, this is some hammer. I'm just sticking with some hammer sounds. Yeah. Hammer whooshes. Ooh. You know? That sounds almost like a reverse sound. Yes. It is. is it, there's part of a tone in reverse there, yeah. like a bowl, meditation bowl or yeah, something? Yeah, that's a great guess. Really? I think you're you're pretty damn close to <laughs> what that is. I mean, it's a some kind of metal resonance, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, train or meditation bowl. It's a good, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's reverse. And that's when Thor calls the hammer and it, and it comes into his hand. So it uh, has that nice power and magical kind of right. element, yeah. And there's an inevitability to a sound in reverse. Yeah, exactly. It's incoming, it's, it's uh, approaching, so yeah. Um, Iron Man, let's see what Iron Man has here. You probably recognize this. Oh. Yeah, that's the, that's the same kind of anticipation. It's before the, before the blast. And there's a, there's a little bit of, um, this, the, a flash charging, mm -hmm. but it's much lower in tone. Yeah, totally. That's, um, yeah. That's so these sounds, you don't just search for Iron Man because there's got to be hundreds of those. Mm -hmm. Do each sound comes with a set of keywords that help you search for it? Yeah, I just search for Iron Man charge, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, charge fire. Um, we have a little description of what happens, but gotcha. yeah, there's always a little, there's certain keywords that you'd be, that you'd be searching for. Right. That would, uh, um, you know. If you find a sound that was hard to find, do you, are you able to then add keywords that might make it easier to find next time or for someone else? You could, you'd have to go through, uh, it, would, it would be a process, oh, but it you is. Okay. could do that. Um, yeah, because once they're in the library, they're kind of uh, databased in a way where they're set in there. And so you could, you know, oftentimes there are sounds that are either miscategorized mm -hmm. or maybe misspelled or something. So you'd have to go in there and, and alter that. But nobody ever, if, you know, I can't just go to the main library and change all the, gotcha. the metadata, which makes sense to me. Sure. Um, I can when we're creating the library in the beginning when right. I'm working with new sounds. Um, and so your goal is to create enough keywords where any of your colleagues can go find that thing if they need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of concisely, but um, really specifically, and in many words you think that you could, that would that would pull up that search word, I guess. Can we, do you have um, Spider-Man web slinging in yeah, here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's like crumpling plastic in yeah, there. Yeah. Oh man. And then we have a little, you know, the newer Spider Man stuff has, uh, he has uh, servos and stuff because right, right. from the suit Iron Man gave him. Yeah. So we have little, um, these little servo elements. Yeah. So in something like um, uh, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, mm -hmm. like any Star Wars ship, it probably has a voice. Mm -hmm. um, when that voice gets established in a first Guardians movie, is that just a touchstone for you guys moving forward? Or are there ways in which you're like not to go outside a certain envelope with a, with a, a sound like that? Yeah, good question. Um, well, you have to maintain what has been done before. Sure. Uh, a big part of it is um, using these sounds that these amazing designers have created and been established. But then, at the same time, they find new ways to introduce the sounds or use the sounds, or maybe they add they added to that ship or um, developed a new ship that was very similar, but it's a new ship. So you want to have a new element of it right. while still having a flavor of that sound that was... Uh, made for the ship. That sounds tricky. Yeah, no, it is. It's a, it's, it's a fun challenge. Oh. Yeah. God, there's so much. Okay, yeah. could you walk me through, can we go <laughs> break it down one more step and see how a sound like that gets put together with elements? Yeah. So this was made by Addison Teague. He's mm -hmm. another amazing designer. Um, 
And th so this sound, I'm hearing a lot of things. I'm, well, I'll, I'll just play it again. So I'm hearing um, there's definitely a jet, a fighter jet element in there. Yeah. And there's also um, a lower kind of rockety element that he was playing with, probably. And and then the the I think the main the defining thing about this sound is that it, there's this um, uh, hot rod or muscle car uh, that he's putting in there, which yeah. makes it sound uh, fun, aggressive, beefy, um, and that's probably was direction on the Guardians movies. They wanted to, to sound like a hot rod or something like that, and so he made these awesome sounds, which it does sound like a big composite. Yeah, but, um, yeah. It's so so the the more you talk, the more. And it never occurred to me before, honestly. And I, I really pay attention to movie sound somewhat, but it sounds so analogous to model making. Mm. Like uh, George sent part of the model shop to a classic car dealership at the beginning of episode two, just to look under the hoods of a bunch of classic cars for some aesthetic inspiration, yeah. both for the CG and the physical modeling team. And we might take a ship and add tailpipes to it just because that's a gesture that your eye understands, yeah. oh, it's a hot rod. And you guys are doing exactly the same thing, adding hot rod sounds in to create the narrative that this is this kind of ship. Absolutely, I mean, we're we're on the same team. I mean, you, you add a, that, that exhaust pipe and we're going to be watching like looking at that that exhaust pipe it's like well what can i what can i put in there to kind of mark that or wow. to find a way to bring that because it really does it help bring it to life when you have a certain element of it that uh, is reflected in the thing that you're designing i mean people think of spaceships as something that is all totally foreign but the modelers add familiar elements in to give you bearings about what the ship means whether it's good or evil etc and yeah. you guys are doing precisely the same thing with yeah sound. and we're constantly looking because you can't when you when you practically try to make a sound for a spaceship you there's no you can't just well, what, how, what spaceships have we recorded? You know, there's no, you, you yeah. have to find ways of grounding it and finding elements where you can um, use a different sound and make it into a spaceship or, or feature a certain sound uh, that, that we're familiar with and making it seem new. And then I would also imagine that it's incumbent on you, if you have a whole bunch of different bad guy ships, that there is some commonality to their sound so you know that these are the good guys and these are the bad guys? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, that is tricky. It's tricky to, to go to that level of it because, uh, um, yeah, you have to, there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers that you're trying to do. You, you know, on one hand, you just have to make it work with yeah. what you're seeing. Yeah. But then on the other hand, you're trying to make it um, either sound scary or, um, uh, you know, if, if, the, if you have these hot rods here, you might try to more of a... a synthy warbly tone for the bad guys or right. something that's right. a little bit so you can differentiate them uh, could you is it possible for you to show me like how your standard working interface is here with sounds and the film up on the on the screen yeah totally so this is just uh this is a pretty typical way of working as we have our software here pro tools and this is just a session mm. for this um for this film and th with this session we have um the, these are all the you know, the hundreds, if not thousands of sounds oh that we have, just layers and layers. Oh. Um, and we, we kind of, this is an effects session, effects in BG, so we have all our effects here, A through, oh, whatever it is, M, and then we have all our backgrounds here. Um, and, and so what we typically be doing when we're working is you have your session here, and this is the timeline of the movie, and right. then you have your, your sound search engine or your sound creation, uh, you know, usually it's sound minor for us. And then uh, we usually have the picture up top. And so we, you'll be, you know, listening to sounds. A lot of it is just listening, listening, because there's over and so over and many over. sounds. Yeah, you're just looking, trying to find the, the one. And if you can't find the right one, figuring out how to make the right one. So a lot of listening. And then when you find something that you think is right, then you import it into the timeline. And then, and then you just watch the picture, and then, uh, and then uh, it works or it doesn't. <laughs> you, you, I mean, I might, I, w I would imagine there are times you get saturated, and you need to like lie down and like listen to Johnny Mitchell or something and come back to it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a lot of listening. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, good. and you definitely get uh, honed in. You know, you're very just focused in on what you're doing, and you're very repetitive. Kind of, um, 
it's a very in time intensive process. It's it's very you know one piece at a time. You're going to try to build this thing, and you're trying to hear it all. Yeah, gelling together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, lots of times you focus on a certain element that you're working on. You know, whether it's a, I don't know, whether it's a punch or it's a spaceship. Um, so you kind of hone in on that, but then you still seeing, trying to see the bigger picture and uh, work through the rest. So now I'm trying to think of analogies to what it was like to work as a modeler, and I would imagine that you could spend time working on a scene using as a, some central anchor point, a big sound, Yes. that someone comes in and takes out and says, that oh. doesn't work, get rid of it, and you kind of have to rebuild the uh, thing yeah. around a different anchor. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, those anchor sounds are, they're great starting points mm -hmm. because you, like you said, it, you're shaping it around what needs to happen. I need to have this big explosion. This explosion's here, and so then f from that, around that explosion, I can find other little things to uh, to add other details, but yeah, if they didn't like the explosion and you have maybe the explosions in a really low register and They said well, it should be more ripping, you know higher and all your little detail sounds were higher that you were Reserving that frequency space for um, yeah. it would be you'd have to rethink it It would be a it would be a puzzle a challenge the the fictional animal sounds always amaze me the most because when I hear that there's like oh there's a lion and there's a gorilla and there's also someone pushing a shopping cart somewhere in the middle yeah, of this totally. could you play me do you have some of those yeah you know I should play you the the master oh yeah that's uh... <laughs> To nail a sound like that, you're also having to think through anatomy, mm. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's uh, I, yeah. Again, this is a rise from sound. That's yeah, a, yeah. A famous, uh, you know, probably yeah, one of the most famous sound designers, and he, yeah, it's you, he's he's building it in a way, and he found an element uh, that really worked for that T Rex that he really liked, and then he constructed it in a way. Um, you know, there's probably some tigers in there. Yeah. I don't know all the, the secrets. But yeah, he's yeah, totally. You're thinking about, yeah, well, what sound works for whatever creature you're doing. There's a certain sound maybe that they have a really long nose and there's some kind of resonance. Right, in the sound. right, right. Like, oh, that's, that, I, I really like that. Maybe I can combine that with this other element. Well, and I hear that and I think that's the sound of a big throat, which is the scariest thing about a T-Rex, right? It's just going to yeah, eat me. Totally. totally. <laughs> Amazing. So Samson, now that that soundscape has been created, how does that make its way into this room and get integrated into the film? Totally. Um, yeah, so after we, our editorial and design process of, it's the longest process of our, um, our schedules, mm -hmm. basically. We have, we'll kind of collect all those thousands of sounds in our sessions, and then we'll come here to the stage and uh, we'll, those sounds will go in, they'll, they'll come up on the board and the mixer will go through one group, so to speak, at a time mm -hmm. and put them in the room, um, you know, add reverb, add, uh, add bass or certain frequencies and just maybe a lot of the process is taking away sound right. that you thought up in your room were, you know, really great or what, but when you come down here, it's more of the movie. You're watching a movie now. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of peeling away. It's a, it's a really great process because the mixer also has a, another set of eyes where it's giving you a different perspective on what needs to be heard or um, how things should be. Oh, fascinating. So you might cr spend a week creating something in your space and bring it down here and it might not work for some reason, but then some tiny shift makes it work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, though. You, you, uh, luckily, a lot of it is elements that you have. Sure. You have a certain, you're constructing a sound. It's pretty tricky, actually, to to make something believable. It seems like it should be simple, mm -hmm. but even a door is really hard to construct and make it seem like you're there and there's a door. And so there's, a lot of times, there's certain elements that um, they're just not helping tell the story that that's a door or whatever it is. Right. So the mixer will be, working with those elements and a lot of the time they'll they'll pick out they'll okay this one's not going I'm going to mute this sound or maybe can, can you give me a do a new hinge squeak for that door or whatever it is to kind of shape it into a way that's uh, the most believable and effective I guess well and the ultimate threshold for this is less that it sounds great than 
it's servicing the narrative, right? Like Absolutely. you're looking at each scene and there must be times you have to call the director and say, listen, we're working with these sounds, but we need some guidance as to where the important parts of the scene might be. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, the um, how we work with the Marvel, the Marvel way, we do have some reviews and mm -hmm. that, that gives us some insight. But a, lot, a large part of that is on the final mix. When we have all the elements, we have the music right. and the dialogue and the effects. And, you know, you have these for effects, you have these thousands of sounds that you're coming in. And so um, you don't need all of them. <laughs> you, know, you, you only need the, the right ones, the ones that are helping the story. And the director is great at telling, at telling the story. That's why they're right. the direct, right. directing. Right. So they'll, they'll tell you what they want and what, what isn't working. And uh, it's a very collaborative uh, process, which, which shapes it. Fascinating. It sounds thrilling. It is. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah.